Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. Man, that's some powerful stuff. Amen. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Can you imagine if that sounded that good here and that powerful here, what that's going to sound like one day when we're gathered around the throne and we're going to lay our crowns down and we're going to be singing that song, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Wow, thank you so much for being a participant. And that's the great thing about worship is it's a participation activity, amen? That you don't just come to watch. And man, if you watch, you're missing out. So it is good uh, to be able to praise the Lord with you today. Today we're starting a new series, and it's start called Thankful Hearts. We're going to be looking today at the idea of having a thankful heart as God's people. And so today, that's what I want us to look for. And to, it is the first Sunday of the month, which means that that is the time that we're not having children's church, but that all the kids get to come down and visit with me for just a few moments. And so I look forward to that. So kids, come on down. Anybody up to the sixth grade, come on down and hang out with me for just a few minutes. <laughs> I just made sure they were coming. All right. Up to sixth grade, come on down and hang out with me for just a minute. Sit on, the, sit on the stage with me. All right, come on down. Oh, there you go. All right, you're, y'all not rushing down here as fast as you rush out on, on the, the mornings, man. But it is sure good to see all of you here today. Man, thank y'all for coming and hanging out with me for just a few moments. I want to talk to you, today we're going to be talking about thankful hearts. When, I want you to see what I have here. Who knows what that says? Thanks. This is a thank you card. Now, every now and then, I will get a thank you card from somebody in the church just to let me know they appreciate what I do and all that. I want you to know this is really a cool thing when I get thank you cards because it just, again, it it feels good to know that people are, are thinking of you. And that's what they do because they take the time to give you something that says just just thank you. As a matter of fact, I got something else I want to show you. Y'all notice my socks today? Well, those are cool, huh? These, I got these socks after the first service. I went into a Sunday school class, and they had a gift for me, and uh, it was these socks. They're ketchup and mustard socks. <laughs> All right? Now, if y'all ever have noticed, I love crazy socks. Man, I have socks with donuts I have socks with pickles I have socks with all sorts of stuff on them and they thought enough to get me a pair of socks that were crazy and they knew I would like them and I love them and I wanted to show them off to you today and the one thing that we've always got to know is that when somebody does something special for us what do we need to say to them thank you we need to say thank you because that shows that we are appreciative of what they've done for us and that they, they thought about us enough to do something special. And so we always need to be thanking them. And today I'm going to be talking about thankful hearts, or just us as Christians and you as boys and girls, to be able to say thank you to God because of all the stuff that he's done for us. And, and sometimes we say thank you even when things are not going as we planned. So we're going to be talking about that today. So I want you to, to be listening. And in just a moment, I'm going to pray with you, and then we're going to let you go back to your seats. Well, there's ladies here on the front row that have bulletins for you that I want you to stop by and pick one of them up. And inside, there's some things for you to do. There's some little coloring things. There's some uh, connect the dots. But also, there's my outline for for my sermon that you can follow along on the screen and fill in the blanks. Now, remember... When you're looking at my screen up here, the word that I want to go in that blank is going to be underlined for you. So that way you don't have to wonder what word goes in there because it will be underlined on the screen, okay? So I want to say thank you to all of you for coming to church and doing and being here every Sunday and, and then coming down front with me because I really like hanging out with y'all. So let me pray with you and remember the two words that we ought to always say when people do something for us is what? Thank you. All right? just to let them know we appreciate what they've done. So keep that in mind, okay? Let's pray, and then you can go get one of those bulletins on your way back to your seat, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, and God, we thank you for all that you've done for us. I thank you, God, that these boys and girls get to be down here with me on the platform. And God, I look forward to these Sundays that I get to be with them. And 
and then on other occasions lord that i just get to hang out with the kids lord what an honor it is to be with them and i thank you for their parents their friends their family members who bring them to church and god i pray that they would continue to do that and father we would always have a thankful attitude toward all that you're doing and all the lord that others do for us because i know that is what you desire for us to do and god i thank you for our church and the great worship time that we've already had this morning and lord we give you praise for it all and it's in jesus name that i pray amen thank you guys for coming we'll pick you up one of those bulletins on your way back and then we'll see you after church okay all right thanks for coming Man, it's great getting to hang out with those kids, man. Amen? So I'm appreciative of them. And thank you all for bringing the kids to our church and, and getting to come and hang out with us and, and just do some things. Uh, we have a great children's program, and we're honored that, uh, that Carrie works so hard and all the helpers with her uh, that keep our program going so strongly. So thank you again for, for being a part of this day. A thankful heart. First, uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 through 18. Over this next month, we're going to be looking at the idea of thankful hearts. And it sounds simple, but my friends, it's really not simple to have a thankful heart because that's something that God puts in us and it's something that we have to stay sensitive to and working on. So let's go ahead and take our Bibles and turn to First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 through 18, and then let's stand in honor of reading God's Word. Just three quick verses. They, they're very short. Uh, very precise but also very important the Bible tells us here rejoice always pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you father we thank you for today thank you for the blessings you've given us for the opportunity to just get to be here today and Lord I thank you for uh, the kids that just sat down here with me Lord I pray that you would continue to uh, bless our, our children's ministry and lord just draw people to us that we can minister to their kids minister to their students minister to their families and that father we could see great things taking place because of your favor and so lord i pray that as we now look into your word that you would keep our minds open our spirits attentive to what you have for us and that god we could uh, have a great experience through your word i pray father that my words today will be your words i pray that this message is your message and Father, I pray that the response would be as you desire for it to be. And God, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. My friends, God's desire is that we have thankful hearts. That's, his, that's what it says. His will is for us that we, we have a thankful heart, that we show this spirit of gratitude in everything that's going on in our lives. Now, how does that happen? That's what I want to look at today. How does it happen? How do we get those thankful hearts? And my friends, it comes from a proper perspective. It's how we view things, how we, how we see things. So it's, it's that proper perspective. That was how we're going to have a, a, a thankful heart. Now, it's not the proper perspective as what I saw here in one thing that I was looking at as I was preparing for these messages. I found a letter <clears throat> that was written by a college student, a, a girl who went away to college. Now, if you, if you have daughters and they've gone away to college and sons, you, they go away, and I, I'm emphasizing girls because that's who I have that went away to college. You, you always know how letters like this might sound, but here's the letter that I saw that might not be the perspective that I hope that we're, we're jarred to, but listen to what she had to say. It says, Dear Mom, sorry I haven't written sooner. My arm really has been broken. I broke it and my left leg when I jumped from the second floor window of my dormitory when we had the fire. We were lucky. A young service station attendant saw the blaze and called the fire department. They were there in minutes. I was in the hospital for a few days. Paul, the service station attendant, came to see me every day. And because it was taking so long to get our dorm livable again, I moved in with him. He has been so nice. I must admit that I am now pregnant. Paul and I plan to get married just as soon as he can get a divorce. I hope things are fine at home. I'm doing fine and will write more when I get the chance. Love, your daughter Susie. P.S. None of the above is true. But I did get a C in sociology and I flunked out of chemistry. 
I just wanted you to receive this news in the proper perspective. <laughs> Amen. So it's all in how you see things. Amen. Today, that's what I want to look at is the proper perspective that we're going to have thankful hearts when we can get our mind and our hearts in line with the things of God, a proper perspective. So when we look at things, and it's, it's the idea of having a proper perspective and having a thankful heart even in prosperous times. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute, that's easy. That's the easy time that we're so, we're so thankful because we realize that we have been so blessed and, and we're going to be that way. So this idea in prosperous times is the idea that we remember where did all this come from? Where do all of our blessings come from? Where does everything that I have, where does it come from? And sometimes in those prosperous times, we tend to forget that. As a matter of fact, over and over and over throughout the Bible, we are told to not forget when things are good, not to forget God. As the idea, when the nation of Israel was being blessed by God into the promised land, in Deuteronomy 8, 17, the Bible says, and this is God speaking to the nation of Israel, then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. God is saying at this point, when you begin to feel blessed, be real careful that you don't lose the perspective and begin to think of how good you are, how hard you've worked, and how much effort you put into it. All the times of education, all the times of, of, of striving out in whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is is in your life, that, oh, you work so hard, and you step up one day and you say, boy, look at all that I've been able to do, man. This is amazing. Because the Bible says, then what God it goes on to say in verse 18, though, he says, and you shall remember the Lord, your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get the wealth. What we need to remember to continue to have thankful hearts is that this is not because of us. That if I can keep the perspective that God has given me everything that I've done, everything that I have, it's been God not me that uh, my perspective if it gets to be about me then i don't have a thankful heart as a matter of fact i might even get a tired heart because i'll be saying whoo all the stuff that i have to keep doing to do this man i'm getting worn out the bible says that we need to then remember that it's the lord who gave it folks listen everything that you have even being here today was not your your ability you say well i chose to be here well, you might have chose to be here, but who gave you the ability to get up? Who chose you the who gave you the ability to even walk? Who gave you the ability to even breathe? Who gave you the ability to do anything to allow you to be in this room? Do you realize that you couldn't do this if God chose not to let you do it? It is his power. It is his might that gives us everything that we do whatever your job is just remember that god is the one who made you to be able to do that you say well my job i had to go to school for my job i had to learn a lot of stuff well who gave you the capacity to even think i can't even say that i i, I stand up here and i say that a man i i wanted to preach a powerful message well you know what there are people who can't even speak and i'm not one of those people as you well know I can talk. I don't know how well I speak, but I can talk. But you know what? It's even God who gives me the ability to even speak. It's perspective. My friends, so often, and I believe we're experiencing this in our nation today, uh, when, when we get prosperous, it's the time that we usually forget God. This is not the only time in Scripture that we're told to remember Whenever things are going well, whenever you're living in houses you did not build, whenever you're drinking from wells you did not dig, whenever you're eating food that you did not necessarily grow, remember, do not forget God. So folks, we will have a thankful heart when we have a right perspective in prosperous times. But not only in prosperous times, but even in adverse times. You notice that Paul wrote here to the church at Thessalonica, he says to see that, uh, to, to in everything, give thanks but that in everything is kind of important here. 
Because that means even in those difficult times, even in those times that we are struggling, we need to realize that, that I still thank God in that. Not that I thank God for it. Not, oh, God, thank you that I'm having the most difficult time of my life. I am so happy that you're blessing me this way. That's not what we're talking about. The fact is that when I go through even the most difficult times of my life, when I am even shaken to the very core of my existence, that we can still be thankful. We can give thanks in that, not for what's going on around me, but the fact, listen to me, that our mighty God is still there with me. That He is not going to let me go through this alone. So when we go even through these adverse times, we can say, thank you, God, that you have not abandoned me. Thank you, God, that you're going to give me what it takes to get through this. Thank you, God, that through you, that no matter what, I still have hope. My friends, listen to me. Even in the most adverse times of our life, we have hope. Amen? And listen to me. His name is Jesus. Man, we just spent about 25 minutes singing to him. He is our hope. In planning this, we need to know we always have hope. And I, I was looking in this, and there's reasons to hope. And I found in, in, in this idea from Stephen Atterbury, Atterburn, he wrote that there are reasons that we have hope. And I, I pulled a few of those that I wanted you to look at today. That no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in your life today, my friends, we still have hope. The first one is we need to always know that God is in control. Have you ever seemed to lose control of your life? Amen. Man, you look around and you go, man, I, I, I feel like I, I can't do anything. I can't change any of this. I can't do any of this. I, I, I have no control in my life. And my friends, listen to me. That's a helpless situation to feel, amen? That's a tough place to be, especially if you're like me and, and the way that I get described sometimes by my own family is that I, I'm a pretty much of a control freak, amen? And there are times that I look around and I have control of nothing. But the great news is, when you have lost control, when you don't know what to do, when you don't have the answer, listen to me, we can still, even in that situation, be thankful to God because He is in control of all things. Amen? God's in control. I don't have to worry about it. Even when I'm not, God is. And even when I think I am, guess what? God is. He's really, he's got control of this. And man, he's laid out promises for me. And he says that he'll always be there. He'll take care of me. So even when I don't have control, oh man, I have hope because the one who created the universe, he does have control. I also, the second thing is that there is eternal life to come. That this, this won't last. That there lays out before us that if we are in Christ Jesus, there is out before us an eternity to where we're going to get to be singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And we're going to be spending an eternity with Jesus, the one who died for me, the one who, as Keith said a while ago, claimed that it is finished. Man, the work is done. I have eternal life that I get to look forward to. So I have hope. Even though, as the Bible says, even though the world slay me, I'm still going to be honest to him. I'm still going to serve him. Why? Because I have an eternity with him. What can man do to me? What can man do to me? Nothing. Because I have eternal life. Third one is the story isn't finished yet. Amen? Our story's not finished. That means that there's still something out there. That means that whatever is going on right now, this is not it. This is not all there is. I, I tell people whenever I, I, I even have stood up from this pulpit before and have, have a casket laid out in front of me here, and I let people know, look, this is not all there is, that we just go through this life and we suffer, then we die, and then it's all over. This is not all there is. This is not all there is for your loved one, that they knew Christ Jesus as the Lord of their lives, as their Savior, and now th th that's even more to come for them. My friends, nothing that we're enduring now is here to last. It will move forward. We will get apart from this. We will get away from this moment in time. So whatever's going on in your life today, you will go on from here. You will go on. 
And then understand this, God has not given up on you. I don't care where you are, I don't care what you've done, I don't care what you think in your mind, I don't care what you think the world tells you. My friends, listen to me, God has not given up. He has not looked at you and said, look, you've gone too far. You've done too much. you said too much stuff. You've declared so many wrong things, and now your life is a shamble. Your life is a mess. Look what's going on around you. And I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I'm not going to deal with you anymore. Listen, my friend, God has not given up on me. He's not given up on you. So I don't care where you are. I don't care what difficult times you're in. I don't care if it's your fault or someone else's fault. God has not given up, and he won't give up. Folks, that was a good place for an amen. <laughs> I really think that, that got me excited. I don't know about you, but I got excited that God doesn't give up on me. Oh, there's been plenty of times if I'd been God, I'd have been a mess. I, I would have been, Harold Gacious would have been in trouble if I'd have been God. I'd have given up on me a long time ago. But God has not given up on us. There's still hope. Here's the next one is we are loved. Amen. The world might tell you that you're worthless. The world might tell you that you don't have much to give. The world tells you that you're, you're doing this and, 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 and no one cares. My friend, listen to me. The Bible says that God loved us. Even when we were yet sinners, Christ died for me. God loves you. God loves me. God loves us. And listen to me. I don't care what the world says. You are loved by him. And there are so many times, man, I've seen people going through stuff in their lives. And, man, they're hurting and they feel like that, that no one cares. They just want to be noticed. They just want to feel apart. My friends, listen to me. I want to share with you, you are loved by God. But I want to share this other thing with you. You are loved by your church. And I pray that this church proves it to you over and over. And I'll tell you, you may, I, you're loved by your pastor. Man, I, I open myself up to you. I want to be there with you. I want to help you because I love you and I love this church. And I know this church loves us and the church loves each other. Man, this is a great place. And we ought to stay that way because we ought to be sensitive to each other. Because I'm telling you, there's people out there that don't feel loved. There may be people in this room that don't feel loved. And if they've been here very long and they don't feel loved, shame on us. My friends, you are loved. Amen. Last one. Oh, here it's cool. We're not alone. Sometimes we go through those difficult times and we feel like no one is there. No one cares. No one's around me. I'm doing this alone. We even look in the Old Testament, the prophets who claimed out, oh, it is only me and me alone, God. And God said, no, it's not. I'm here with you. You got other prophets that are here with you. You're never, ever alone because God says I will I promise you I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you I don't care where you go I'm not going to leave you alone I'll be there you call on my name and he says I'll tear, tell, tear heaven and earth apart to get to you I don't care where you are or what you've done we are not alone so my friends, today, to have a thankful heart, you have to have the proper perspective. And these help us in our perspective. But the second thing I want to bring out in this is thank thanklessness is a dangerous thing. To not have a thankful heart is dangerous. As a matter of fact, it's so dangerous that written in the Scripture, when Paul writes to Timothy and tells him that in the end days, perilous times are coming for the church to the church perilous times are coming in the church all right look what he says he says perilous in the end times perilous times are coming and then he says this for men will be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy now listen if you think thanklessness is not a big deal paul wrote it and look what he put it amongst that's some pretty bad stuff. But you know who he's talking about here? He's talking about the church. That in the church, because of the church, tough times are going to come because inside the church, people are going to become like this. And one of those, and he puts it, man, he puts it right next to unholy. Hey, that's pretty serious, amen? I don't want my name next to anything unholy, amen? 
Do you want to be mixed in? Well, there's unholy and then there's Harold. <laughs> no, not good. Amen? Not good. Well, then unthankfulness that we think is really not a big deal, it's right next to unholy. Pretty big deal for the church. So how do we know? And what is an unthankful heart? Let me, I just got a few minutes. I want, I want to share this with you. As thanklessness is a dangerous thing, it's so dangerous that it's put up with the words unholy and other things, it is that it has a cold heart. A cold heart is dangerous. A cold heart is dangerous out in the world, but a cold heart is even more dangerous in the church. Because what a cold heart is, just we're indifferent. Don't care. Don't care about things, don't care about people, don't care about the situation, don't care about what the church is doing, just don't care. Folks, listen, that's a cold heart, and the Bible does not want us to have cold hearts. God says that, that he wants our hearts to be sensitive, that we're indifferent, because we're indifferent to the people, we're indifferent to those who are lost. And we're fine as long as it's us. And I've got that cold heart. And I don't really care what happens to the world. I don't care what happens to the lost. Now, we would never verbalize it. I don't think any of us would stand up and say, I don't care for lost people. I don't care what happens to them. But my friends, listen to me. I believe a lot of times maybe our attitude and our actions show it. That maybe we really don't care that much about lost people. Because we're indifferent to the hurts of people around us. To our own brothers and sisters in Christ, we're just, eh. They're hurting, eh. They need help, eh. We say, oh, we're not that way, preacher. Maybe in our mouth. But what about our actions? So indifference to the people around us and the needs. But not only are we cold-hearted, but we're hard-hearted. We're unresponsive unresponsive to the things of God, unresponsive to his calls, because we're so wrapped up in the things that we're doing more than anything else. And it's all about us. It's all about me. It's not about God anymore. It's not about people anymore. It becomes about me. And, and, and God says, hey, Harold, here's what I want you to do. Harold, here's where I want you to go. Harold, here's how I want you to help. Harold, here's what I want you to be. And I say, but not now, God. And we say the answer no is we're unresponsive to the call of the Holy Spirit of God. So we're indifferent to the needs of the people and we're unresponsive to the calling that God has for us. We need to, we need to care about people. Listen, Thursday night in this church, we had over 1,700 people, not counting our people. Our people didn't even get, I almost said our people didn't count, but they do. You all counted, but you didn't count on the clicker. We had over 1,700 people walk through this church, walk through that door through and all along our church. Out of that 1,700, if we go along with what the Scripture even says and what others have, have taught, probably two-thirds, at least two-thirds of those people did not know Jesus. How do, how do you feel about that? God has called us to reach those people how do we feel about that? Thanklessness is caused by a cold heart, a hard heart, and the last one is an entitled heart. Because entitled hearts are angry. Entitled hearts get angry. Because entitlement means that you feel you deserve what you're getting. That you deserve more and that the people ought to give you more and show you more. And because they're not, then you get angry. My friends, listen to me. We live in an angry nation today. Because they are feeling entitled. People are feeling like, I deserve. You give me, give me, give me. It's all about what you do for me. My friends, listen to me. Thanklessness is, is that right there, an entitled heart. And there is no place in the church for that. Because none of this can be about us. We can't think any of this about us. Because we get angry when it becomes about us. Well, I don't like the songs they picked. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of that. I don't like the way he preaches. I'm tired of that. I want it this way, and I'm entitled. Man, you got to do it the way I want. you got to ministry the way we want to minister. you got to, you got to, you got to, because it's all about me. 
And my friends, I'm here to tell you, if, the, if you have an entitled heart, you're going to be angry a lot. Especially, the, have you ever thought this? And I'll close. The more entitled hearts there are, the more anger there's going to have to be. Think about it. Because the more entitled hearts there are, the less there's going to be about satisfying that person who has an entitled heart. Because everybody else is going to be satisfied. It's all about me. So there's going to be more anger. Because no one is caring about each other. Even the entitled people don't want to help other entitled people. And inside the church, for us to have thankful hearts, we can't feel entitled. We ought to feel blessed. I'm not entitled to do this. I'm blessed to get to do this. We're not entitled to anything, my friends. We are blessed with everything. So, what does he tell us? In everything. In every situation. Give thanks. How do you do it? By viewing it with right perspective. By realizing that God's in control. It's not about me. I'm loved and I'm not alone. That God, you could break my cold heart, break my hard heart today. God, if I'm feeling entitled in any way about this, God, you break that from me as well. God, I want this to be about you. And I want this to be about people around me. God, break my heart. Break my heart. Create in me a thankful heart. I'd like you to bow your head as we step into this time. With every head bowed and every eye closed, as we step into this time of invitation, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus in your life? Has there been that moment of time that you said, God, I know that I need you. God, forgive me. Forgive my sin and take the sin away from me and become the Savior of my world and the Lord of my life. God, forgive me today. My friends, if you, if you have never done that, I want to tell you today, you need that more than you need your next breath because your next breath doesn't matter apart from God. So I want to encourage you, call upon the name of the Lord today and be saved. He's calling you. He said, I, I, as Keith said, it's finished. I've done everything that's necessary. All you have to do is come and believe. Just come and believe. I've done it all for you. Come on. My friends, we're going to have people down front that want to pray with you, want to encourage you, want to help you in any way we can. But you don't need us, but we're here. But man, you need to call on Jesus' name today. Would you call on his name and say, God, change my life. I need my life changed, and it can only come from you. My friend, maybe you're here today and you say, I know I have Jesus, but it's been a long time since he's been in this, been the first place of my life. And I know my heart's been kind of cold lately. I know God's been leading me, but I haven't been responding. I know that my heart's not broken over the lost people, over the kids, over my family. And maybe I've even been a little bit selfish in all this. God, would you change my heart this morning? Oh, change my heart and let it be about you. Let it be about others. Change us, Lord, during this invitation. In just a moment, I'm going to close this prayer, and then I'm going to ask you to stand. And I want you to join back in the praise and worship with us, all right? But if God's speaking to your heart, man, I, I want you to come on. Step out. Let us help you. Let us encourage you. But most importantly, right there, you do it where you are. God, hear our prayer today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask you to stand. Join.